All right, hello everyone. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build uh, my full kit from scratch with all the parts that come with it. And I got a few tools, wire strippers, some crimpers, which come in handy, let's see use those. A power drill, a nut driver, and a little screwdriver. That's pretty much all you need, and actually a lot of these are kind of optional as well, but they do make the job a little easier. So let's just get started, okay? First thing you gotta do is put your solenoids in place. I'm gonna do a six solenoid kit, and of course, depending on how you're putting together, you can do it however you want, but typically for most kits, I do, uh, that's one of your flipper boards, okay? And then this will be your sling. All right, and then the back bumper. Your pop bumpers right here. So let's screw that guy in place. <coughs> and you just need your life extender to go in. And uh, you might start seeing these. I got some little uh, spacers for the circuit board and the screws to put those spacers in place with. So I'll just put that on there. Screw that in. There's a bunch of different spacers you might see. Um, started moving to these things, but I also have these uh, larger spacers. I like these little little guys because you just have one screw to, to screw in place and it's a little bit easier to put together. All right, right back. And another screw on there. And spacers in place. All right. So now everything's kind of put together. Now I just gotta wire it up. Uh, I already pre-wired. Uh, this is for going from here to there. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, but the first thing we gotta do is just run all of our positive wires to the solenoids. So I'll go ahead and do that. I got a uh, red positive wire here. And pretty straightforward what you gotta do here. I usually start one is the flipper, two is slings, and then three and four, or in this case, just three, it'll end up being the, the pop bumpers in the back. So for this guy, I'm just gonna take him, measure how long I need, and look at one, yep, about that long. I always get a little bit more, because you'd be surprised. Always seems like you need less than you actually do. <coughs> Strip the wire, and use the crimpers to crimp on the ring terminal, right here, okay. I'll just strip the other end so I don't have to do that once once it's connected. At this point should be able to <coughs> unscrew the screw on the solenoid. And just hand tighten it and then use the nut driver or whatever you might have to tighten it up all the way. Well, that's good. And I'll do the next one. So about here to here, looks like. That guy. Strip the wires off. It is pretty redundant once you get down to it here. <clears throat> Crimp the ring terminal back and on again. And put it onto the solenoid. As you can see, I'm just Screwing the nut on the solenoid here and whoosh, tightening it down. All right, number two positive is done. And then I'll do this last guy over here. And again, I'm just going to measure out how long I need for my wire length. I'm always leaving a bit more than I think. And strip both ends off. So strip it off. There we go. Crimp my ring terminal on. And there we have it. Next one's ready to be put on. Now I'm gonna have to do the same thing for the base of the solenoids. And do have 
some other solenoids coming in where you'll actually connect the ring terminal to the other lead here. These ones, they connect to the base for now. So just something to be aware of. You might get a different type of solenoid in in the future that has a different connection point. And just working on the reliability of these solenoids. So these new ones will be a little more reliable, hopefully, based on how they connect internally. All right, so now I've got, uh, let's see, green, white, and black. So I'll start with my black wire here. And that'll be from the, the flipper solenoid. So that guy, again, just doing the thing, measuring how long the wire needs to be, stripping both ends off, crimping the ring terminal in place, and now, instead of connecting to the top, I'm going to connect to the base. I already mentioned that might not always be the case, but not much of a difference. <clears throat> so that one's done. And now we'll go to green. So you saw I, did, I left one of the screws off of the base on these so that I could connect the wire to it later. So thinking ahead there. <clears throat> yep, strip them, crimp them, and screw them. There we go. That's number two. And the last one, we're going to do a white wire for that. So you see I did red wires for all the top because I'm going to connect that all to the same positive essentially. And then I did the colored wires for the bottom. You could do whatever you want. It's just kind of what I typically do. Switches on the negative side, so it's always good to have those ones have different colors. Easier to trace in the future if you have any issues. You can always know what wires going where. <clears throat> Let me tell you, it's been, it's saved me time many times as I've been building a lot of these kits. <clears throat> Something's not working right. You can always trace it right back to the solenoid that's not hooked up correctly. All right, so all these are now in place. All the wires are in place. Now I just gotta connect them onto this little cap. So you see it unplugs and then you can loosen the each of the terminals on here, they're just flathead screwdriver that you need for that. Loosen them all up. And then just look at here on the board, it's labeled minus plus. So I'm going to do the first one. So solenoid one. And I'm going to connect my minus wire. Negative I do to the base. It actually doesn't matter where you put the negative wire. Uh, but it kind of makes sense that it's on the base if you can do it. But again, it doesn't really matter. It's just preference. And then the next one, so over here. I hope you can see this okay. But I'm really just, I'm inserting the wires and then screwing the terminal down to make sure it gets a good pressure fit. I do screw these pretty tightly when I'm done. Okay, and then you see it's all connected up. Sometimes I'll just kind of twist these wires a little bit just to keep things nice and tight and <coughs> looking, you know, somewhat nice too. It's just a little little thing that I like to do to make it look nice and professional. And then I got one more here. <coughs> so let's see. Look at these guys. So they're pretty even. And then go ahead and twist them around too. That's not not critical that you do this, but it's always nice to have things as clean as possible. And once again, just unscrew this guy and then we have our minus and our plus just like that. 
I don't know my big hands in the way all the time on this video, but I think you'll get the idea of how I'm doing everything just from listening to me and then seeing the end result. All right, that looks pretty nice, right? It's uh, nicely wired, everything's hooked up. And the next thing I gotta do is this guy. So this wire is gonna go from here to the actual board itself. Okay, so I got my 12 position board here and I'm gonna hook this up to, just to make things easy, the uh, outputs eight, nine, and 10. <coughs> so kind of following the same thing, just gonna unscrew these terminals on here, loosen them up. And then I'm gonna follow the same order that I followed here, so. Red is my positive. It's going to go in the top one. I'll tighten that guy. Followed by a green next. Oh no, uh, black next. So insert the black wire. You saw I kind of pre ready this wire so you didn't have to sit there and watch me strip all these wires too but i thought it'd be good for you know if you want to get the full effect to watch pretty much everything that i do <clears throat> so just i'm just tightening all these guys up here onto the board and so now i've got red black green white and then I'll plug into this end of the board. And I just make sure, yep, red's going to positive. <coughs> Black, green, white, perfect. I just have to do the same thing, only on this guy. And you see it's plus one, two, three. That's going to go to plus eight, nine, ten <coughs> on the 12 position board. You can actually put them anywhere you want on the 12 position board, but since there's a four output terminal there, it just makes it really simple if you use those specific outputs you can configure and doff uh, you know, what ports do what <clears throat> so it's really whatever you want to do so long as you make sure and configure doff appropriately and we did black then green then white Let's see if I can get all four of them in there at the same time yeah there you go they're all in there now and all I have to do is just tighten up the the wires so all my wires are nice and tight and this guy is pretty much ready to plug in before I do that <coughs> Oh, by the way, you're probably wondering, oh, you only, made, you only made three, you only put three solenoids in there. Well, before I started the video, I actually created another one. So this one's already done. So you didn't have to watch me do the same thing twice. But if you have six solenoids, you'll have to do the same thing twice. The only thing to be careful of is that when you do that, see the first one I did this way, it's like when I did that way, and that way, when it mounts in your cabinet, okay? Because really, as you mount it in your cabinet, you're probably going to have it mounted like like this in your cabinet. With you know, if I'm facing the cabinet, it's going to be like this because you've got your flipper right here, and your other flipper on this side, and then your sling, and your and your right sling, and then your pop bumpers in the back. So you just need to make sure that you remember to to put all the solenoids so they're kind of opposite facing each other like this. Otherwise, you'll end up with a symmetrical uh, board, and when you go to put it in your cabinet, you'll be like, oh shoot, what did I do? Yeah. So just be aware of that, and you'll be all right. Other than that, everything's exactly the same. So then I always come with this board. It just makes it easy to plug everything in and, and hook it all up. And the way that we're gonna mount this is kind of like that. So I'll have our power supply here, and then our board right here. <coughs> I've got, uh, let me go get one thing. 
I guess, and our power cable. Okay, so this power cable will come with it. So I'll just start with this anyway, because it's here. <clears throat> so for the power cable, you got three wires here, and it is kind of annoying that the wires colors don't really make a lot of sense. However, I'm going to explain it to you right now. Blue is your hot wire. And again, these are probably subject to change. <clears throat> Green is your ground, so that one makes sense at least. I don't think anyone will mess that one up. And then brown is your neutral. Alright. So I got that guy ready to go. So power supply. I just mount this on with two little screws, same ones that you mount the boards in place with. And then you go ahead and screw the back on. There's just two little mounting points here. One of them is right there on the back. And then the other one, there's a little hole on the front right side of the power supply that you use for a nice little mount. So there you go. That guy's on there secure enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and mount this guy on. So I'll need these little washers again. I'll need four of them. <clears throat> so let's see. I want to mount a little bit offset there. One and then two. I do try to at least, you know, make it look like I tried to center this thing properly. in the center there and three and then the fourth guy is right there all right so now these are both mounted ready to go uh, let's see Power supply, let's look that all up. So I told you about the three wires here. And so now we're just gonna hook them up. And usually I don't use a drill for this, but I will in this case. So remember my line was blue and the line is on the left hand side here. And then neutral is brown. And then ground. And if you don't see it, there is actually like some writing on the front here. L is line, N is neutral, and there's a little round earth symbol there. And then we just need our power line hookup. So once again, use these spade terminals for this, and you should have some spade terminals in your kit. If you don't have a kit, then you can buy some spade terminals. Or you can use ring terminals too. <clears throat> Spades are just a little easier for these kinds of connections because then you don't have to take the screw all the way out. And once again, there's a V minus and a V plus on here. So of course, naturally, I'm gonna hook up the black wire to the V minus terminal and the red wire to the V plus terminal. Okay. So that's hooked up like that right there. And then run this over to my board power. <coughs> now you will note there are actually two power inputs on these boards now. It's uh started doing that just to give you a little more flexibility with the motor. A little simpler to hook up different voltage motors to this thing. But if you're just using the same power supply for the motor, then it's easy to work out too. And we're 
back to terminals. We need to just put our wires inside there. And since we're going to use the same motor, same power source for the motor, I'm just going to run a little jumper wire from my power input to my motor input. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take these wires and spin them together. And then put them in here. And I always check, you know, I've been doing this so long, I still always check to make sure I'm putting positive into positive and negative into negative. It's <coughs> easy mistake to make. consequences are actually not that severe but rather not make that mistake ever of putting the wrong polarity lead in there okay so that guy's gonna plug into there like that and then I'm just gonna like I said run the power lead over to my motor power input to okay okay now unscrew this guy and same kind of deal here check to make sure I'm putting the leads into the right place. Oh, I messed that one up a little bit. I always try and spin the wires before I put them in. So I don't have any loose ones getting lifted up. <clears throat> All right. Plug that guy in. And now we got power connected, we got solenoids. Let's plug it all in. So let's plug in our solenoids here. And then that goes there. And our other set. <clears throat> Coming up here, like this. this guy into power. Let's hope everything comes on nicely. All right, no sparks, no explosions. That's good. <clears throat> so now we just need to, who did you see that spider just crawl out of nowhere? <clears throat> I'm going to move these tools out of the way because hopefully we'll need them anymore. And our next step is to Test it, make sure it's working. The way we're going to do that is we're going to plug in our computer. Let's see here. Let's take this over here real quick and boot it up. All right. You might be able to see this a little bit, but I'm just going to use the Pinscape config tool. I'm going to plug this in. Oh, your little clicky pack. Oops. And I'll open that up and go to the output screen. And now I can just turn on my output. So if you remember, I had it hooked up to three, four, and five. So let's try that. Three, four, five, and then eight, nine, and ten. Eight, nine, and 10. All right. So they all work and I'm ready to go. Now, maybe I want to hook up something else. Hey, why not? Why not hook up uh, an expansion board? So I'll show you how to do that real quick in case you want to, you know, hook up. Maybe you purchased an expansion board. You're like, how do I hook that up? Well, it's not too difficult. The only thing you have to do is just run the cable that I supply from the board here into 
the expansion board where it says input. Okay. And at that point, the only other thing you need to do is provide power to it, which really you could just jump the wire, the power wire from your power supply to the expansion board. In this case, just to keep things simple, I'm going to have a separate power supply here. I'll just turn it on because you could actually power this with a separate power supply if you wanted to. Okay. So now I've got 12 volts going to this expansion board and it's really the same thing. It should already be configured to use it and if I go ahead and turn on these outputs, yeah, 13, uh, 13 14, 15, etc. And then also the expansion board portion of it, which is uh, these 16 outputs that are meant for the light bar, which, you know what, might as well. Show you that too. So if you want to see how you'd hook up a light bar, okay? It's actually really simple. Just 16 channel output board there. You click that in place. And now as I test this, you can see the different lights coming on. That's the green one. And, uh, let's see, that should be red. Yeah, that's red. Okay. And of course it goes all the way down the line. So you can test all your different outputs there. And then, uh, you know, it's just a matter of configuring in DOF saying which light goes to which, which in this case, uh, output number, I guess the, it's going to be out zero on the TLC 5940 because you only have one expansion. It's really output 18 in Pinscape. And uh, that'll start with the left one all the way over to the, to the right one or LED number five. And... Uh, Let's see, anything else? Oh, well, I'm going to hook up buttons. So if you do want to hook up buttons, those will go on all these ports right in the middle, down the middle here. There's a ground wire that goes to the first terminal on the button, and then one, button one, two, button two, three, button three, and so on and so forth. It goes all the way up to 14 on this board. And I think that's, that's good for now, but... If you have any other questions, then you can always ask. I hope you enjoyed that. And now you have a video, you know, just showing you how to put this whole thing together. And hopefully it's, you see it's not really that hard, too. At least from a hardware perspective, everything's provided for you. So you just got to really just put it together. All right. Thanks, everyone. Until next time.